Welcome to the Chuck and Deb Show, heard each Wednesday afternoon at 4 p.m. here on 1490 AM WWPR. And now, here's Chuck and Deb. Hi, I'm Chuck. And Deb. And welcome Welcome to Biker Biker Life Life with Chuck and Deb. We are truly grateful and thankful that you've joined us today. We have got another fantastic show lined up just for you. And Deb, you're going to take complete control of the show today. Okay, so As let's usual. get started. Biker Life Radio is for those who are inspired to ride and those who inspire others to ride. We want to reveal the truth behind the motorcycle mystique and real-life stories that will help you discover your purpose, achieve true freedom, and define your destiny. So today's sponsor is the Tony and Guy Hairdressing Academy out of Colorado Springs, Colorado, and Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. So let's crank up the engines, chins in the wind, and knees in the breeze. Let's get rolling. All right, let's get start this thing and get her going, Deb. Uh, so you got a you know a lot lined up for us today, and I appreciate that because I've sort of been uh, you know just sort of existing a little bit. So you're going to carry the weight of the show today. I get to bug you all day long. And what would make that different than any other day? Nothing. Okay, here we go. Absolutely nothing. So what I'd like to start with, though, is we did actually get out and get a little riding in this past weekend. So I would like to start there. Yeah, Um, that's a great place to start, in fact. Okay. So Saturday night we were uh, talking about, and so we had some, an invitation from some friends. Um, Scott and Christy. Scott and Christy, thank you guys so they're, much they're for thinking about us. We appreciate us. them very much. Thank and you. they invited us to what looked like a pretty unique bike night that I hadn't heard of before. So, of course, in all um, unexpectedness, <laughs> we got to go. We got to give it a shot. We got to try it out. So it is over the Skyway in downtown. Is that downtown St. Pete? Am I saying that right? I guess it is uh, downtown St. Pete in one way. I don't remember the street it's off of, but it's It's a part part of downtown St. Pete. Central Avenue, I think it was. Yep. So um, what was a little bit different is uh, it was at a coffee and kind of an eclectic drink place, which I thought was an interesting mixture. But um, I probably need to get the name of that so that we can talk more intelligently about that particular location. I thought you had the name down. It it was uh, electric something or whatever. Intermezzo Coffee and Cocktails. Um, And it was. (laughs) That's a that's a tough one. I'm telling you. That's. Yeah. No wonder. Say it again. What Intermezzo Coffee and Cocktails and the bike night was Kickstart Bike Night. And now, kind of looking back at it, it makes a little bit more sense because what would you say about the motorcycles that were attending that event? They were all different, uh, different types of bikes, things okay. that I've never seen at a bike show before, really, uh, ranging from a lot of Hondas to Triumphs. Yeah, a lot of Triumphs. Uh, I saw yep. a lot of Triumphs. So, yep. yeah, and older motorcycles. So why are you saying you say somehow this makes some sense that Kick- it's coming to Stetter? Oh, they're Kickstarters. Kickstarters. Were the bikes yeah. all Kickstarters? No, they weren't. But I think that because of the age of them, many of them probably Maybe. were. Maybe I didn't pay attention. I didn't I was, take, uh, still, pay attention, uh, too. But I thought that was kind of interesting, the name of that bike night. And yeah, it was okay. kind of, a, they had a DJ outside, which is a little bit different. And it's on kind of the side cafe it was just an interesting location. Great, great spot. Great fun. Um, very interesting drinks, coffee. It was a pretty neat little place. It was different. I would say that it was uh, definitely a college type scene place, which I didn't mind whatsoever. Uh, it was neat uh, the way the bikes were outside there, and there were a lot of different bikes. So it was nice to ch- nice to check those out. And uh, the place was uh, uh, you said eclectic or something. It was yeah. I was trying yeah. to use some big words and be fancy like <laughs> you or something. Yeah, it was sort of an interesting place. I think some of the furniture they might have just gotten out of a, a Goodwill, which is nothing wrong with that, or Salvation Army. It was kind of retro-like. I mean, it was sort of neat. I'm yeah. not putting it down. I'm just saying, you know, if it works, it works. So, right. you know, they were able to get it to work, and it apparently worked because it cost me over $10 for a drink. Yeah, it was a little bit pricey, but it was a good old-fashioned. It was a good old-fashioned, but I'm not used to paying $10 for an old-fashioned. No, but sometimes you just got to live on the wild side, hey, and live it up, buddy. I live on the wild side oh, when I yeah. can. I just haven't been doing a lot of that lately, though I did that day. Yeah, well, let's tell us all about what you oh, did that day. Oh, do I have to day. go over that crazy story? Bit. Yes, you must I'm not share. even sure I still have the energy to go over that crazy well, story. Just 
muster up a little bit of it? You can. I know you got it in you. Let's go. You are a <laughs> All right, motorcyclist. well, here, I'll give it a shot here. All so, right. So basically, you know, we go to meet Scott and Christy, and that was down at the gas station right down the road. And, you know, I'm all happy. I'm on my bike. I got my ear uh, buds in, and I'm riding down the road, and I'm feeling great because we haven't been on the bike in at least a couple of weeks. weeks. So here's Chuck and Deb. We're doing this Biker Life show, and we haven't had any really biker life <laughs> uh, for ourselves personally just because of the things that are going on in our lives. So sort of driving me crazy. So finally, we we get on the bike and I'm just, I'm just, I'm all the, all of a sudden just immersed in it. I'm lost in it yeah. because all of a sudden I'm just loving it. And then I see you with this little side leg thing going on right off the bat and I'm going, what is that? So <laughs> you might have thing. to get it. I might in, have to talk about that then. Yeah. You might have to get into that doohickey <laughs> that you were wearing. <laughs> So, you know, we're riding down the road, and I'm just loving my music, loving the ride. And so we go to Scott's then. We got to get some cash. Then we're going to get some gas, cash and gas. Yeah. And, um, so we're leaving, we're taking off, and again, put my headset in, and I'm I'm just flying down the road, just enjoying myself, and Scott's leading, so I have absolutely nothing in the world to worry about. No, nope. I, I like it in the back, okay? I know you do. I, 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 you know, I, like, I, would, I don't mind leading every once in a while, but I would much rather, if anybody gave me a choice, I would go in the back, because then I can do whatever I want to do in the back, and I don't bother anybody. Right. Um, but anyway, so I'm just chilling out, and we were just, we just got off the interstate we were going on to 275 275 there and all of a sudden it i start thinking about 275 because we started talking before how we wanted to get the 360 camera and maybe at the time we were going which didn't work out but maybe at the time we were going we'd be able to 360 the sunset Right, and the Skyway Bridge. And the so Skyway, over the Skyway amazing. Bridge. Right. And that's actually what tipped it off. It like, ding, 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 Skyway Bridge. And I'm like, oh, and 360 cam. Well, I've sort of got to back up a little bit because, well, I don't know how to tell this story. So all of a sudden it hit me that I had the 360 cam on the back of my bag on the bike. Right. And I asked Deb while we're driving the road to look behind my bag, and I'm I'm like lipping 360, and I'm freaking out. <laughs> and she's like, "Well, I don't, you know, she of course she never gets anything. Lipping, yep, I just don't get it. <laughs> Flat tire wobble, anyway. Yes, she's just she's Camera, in her own picture, world too. She's like, just leave me alone. All right. You no, know, finally, she I think she gets it. And I'm like freaking out. You know, a 360 camera is not a cheap camera. No, not at all. And, you know, I left it on the back of my pack. I, it's not back there, obviously. I reach back there. I don't feel it. So we exchange words. She understands. I'm going to go home, and I will meet you guys there. You got that, right? I understood completely, yes. Okay. So it, it worked out pretty good because there was an exit right there. So I went off that exit, and then I rode like a bat out of hell. Imagine that. Mm, yeah, yeah. Well, you know what? It felt real good, too. <laughs> Too. I mean, I, the only thing is, is, is Thumper was starting to smell. I, I started smelling some stuff. It wasn't burning or anything, but it was just this unusual smell that I haven't melt, I smelt on Thumper before. Because huh. I was really putting it to it. Okay. I mean, I, I had it cranked back pretty good. Yeah. I mean, at one point, uh, I don't want to get in trouble, but I was going over the speed limit quite a bit. <laughs> Well, they can't get you now because no one clocked you doing it. So how fast Are you were you sure? going? I'm ser- how fast were you going? Let's. Well, I was yeah, going fast. Back. I don't want to say because you know I'm going to get chewed out about being unsafe. Okay. And I was actually, I was unsafe in a way. I knew what I was doing. I was trying to be. You know, it's one of those things where you know you're being unsafe, but you're trying to be safe about it. That, to make any sense? I was just about to say that sounds a little backwards. I was being unsafe, but I knew what I was doing. I was in control. It was that, all that's okay, what they say at unsafe. the very last moment, right? Exactly. Boom. Yeah. Huh. Anyway, okay. I made it. So here I am. So you be all you want to be, Coach Deb, and I'll be just Ryder <laughs> Chuck over here if all you don't right. mind. You're so right anyway, on, so I'm Ryder heading Chuck. back, and I'm like, you know, I got to get back there. Time's of the essence because if the camera's just sitting there or somebody's run it over or whatever, I've got to get the time back as quickly as I can in order to save my poor 360 camera. Right. And not only that, I've got to get back there and meet you guys. Right, and a 30-minute drive across the Skyway back That's to right. meet up with us. Yeah, it's a 35-minute drive, I think it said. So so anyway, so I'm heading back, and I'm and then I get on the road that we were on, so I'm 
I'm wa- looking across the street as I'm going up the road on on that road, you know, that we came down because it's on the opposite side. Okay. And so I'm checking out the road the entire time, and then I'm thinking, okay, I, I think maybe if I took a turn here at the exit at Old Tampa Bay at 301, maybe it would have fa- fallen off there. Right. And so I gave a good scan there as I turned up and get all the way back home. I didn't see it whatsoever. Uh, I can and so I the pull up in front of the house and I'm like, uh, I'm just like bummed out. Yeah. And uh, so anyway, I decided I have to go to the restroom because now I got to go another 35 miles back. Right. So I go ahead and leave the bike out front, come in, do what I got to do. And I start to leave. And, you know, some people are probably like I am. You know, when you when you get ready to go, you check your pockets or something like that. You pat yeah. them down to make sure you've got the things that are important to you. Sure. So it's sort of just a habit for me. Okay. So when I went to pat down my back pocket, uh, huh? that's where the 360 camera was. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so all of that when it was right there in your back pocket. All right, it was right there in my back pocket. And I'll tell you Jeez. how that happened. But so immediately i'm like happy but i'm sort of frustrated still it's like one of those things oh thank goodness i got it so i'm not ecstatic that i found it because now i'm you know just bummed that you had to find it that way yeah that i was i I wasn't smart enough to know i had it in my pocket sooner you were in the ozone you were out in the riding zone i was i was into it there's no doubt but here's what went down and when i go back and i look at it is i remember we were getting our bikes ready and here's the funny thing deb you didn't help me either Oh. Don't don't give a big pause roll in your eyes. <laughs> well, you didn't help me either. Help. We talked. We yes. said that we, we couldn't put it on my bike in the garage because we've got the kayak and the kayak would have hit it. So I'd have had to back the bike out. Right. And then we were going to put the 360 on the bike when we left. Okay. Right. And then we're backing out and you're like giving me this hand signal to roll on. So I just rolled on and left, not right. thinking well, about that, it well, either. That, so that doesn't kept... matter. Okay. All you had to do was ask the question. You know, we had a plan. Why did he change the plan? You know, I obviously forgot. I'm not blaming you, even though you are to blame. Of course. I'm, you know, it is your fault. I mean, I would have had to go through <laughs> all that if you had just simply said, hey, you know, where's the camera we were going to put on? Well, you wouldn't have read my lips and you wouldn't no. have understood anyway, so it doesn't really matter. No, I would have read your lips. You no. can't read my no. lips. And I, the thing is, is I can never hear you because here's the funny thing, folks, when we're riding with Deb, <laughs> drives me absolutely nuts. Does it really? Just it say does. It one more time. Drives it you drives nuts. me absolutely nuts. Here, here's what Deb face. does. She wants to talk to me while we're on motorcycles, and we both have, have loud pipes, right? And she always wants to talk to me, and here's how she talks to me. Hi, are we going to pull over to the next exit? (laughs) Yeah, I mean, like normal. I mean, like you, I'm like, you've got to yell at me. I know. Because I've got stuff in and she's like just trying to talk to me naturally. And I'm like, you have got to, and she never yells. And I'm like, what is the deal here? What what is the deal, Dad? Don't give me up, man. I am not a yeller. That's all there is to it. I'm just not a yeller. If Rex or somebody or Scott, maybe, or or somebody you were talking to, you'd be, I guarantee you'd yell at them. I would not yell at anybody. That's not who I am. So why would it's I yell at them? It's not yelling at them. It's raising your voice in order for them to hear. Anyway, where oh, was I, I with the story? We go round and round about this one. Our poor audience is listening to this. Good gracious. Well, they gracious. need to know in case they're actually out with. Well, they'll you'll treat them different than you do me. I'll yell at them. Yeah, and then they'll you'll hate raise me your forever. voice so they can hear you. You won't yell no, at them. Don't, I don't. yell at you. <laughs> You know, we have earbuds in. Not everyone rides with earbuds, and so there is a but difference. But you there. talk like we're sitting next to each other, well, and course, like I can hear I, you. It's frustrating. Well, yeah. Okay, so where was it. I in the whole story? Well, that it's my fault that you found That's your six, right. 360 so we camera out, in your pocket. I get out, and I I can't get the uh, the garage door to open in my bag. Right? Is that what it was? I think so. Yeah, you couldn't get so it to that close distracted with the, me. Yeah. And so I shut the garage manually, and then we took off. But here's the deal. Because I am so smart, I outsmarted myself. Yes. How did what? Wait. Yep. Because you're what so I smart. initially did is I was going to place the the three sixty cam on the back of the pack. Okay. I actually did it, and then my thought said, hmm. "No, don't place that there. It'll fall off. You'll end up breaking it." And so then I must have put it in my pocket, listening to that voice, the and voice. then I forgot to put it on. 
as we moved out because it was your fault you didn't tell me to put it on. Well, yeah, and I guess what I was thinking, I didn't think about it when we pulled out. I just knew that we needed it to be on before we crossed the Skyway. And so my thought was at the gas station, but, you know, there was a lot of things going on at the gas station, too, because we needed gas, and Scott and Christy were there, and I was excited to see them. And you know, I should actually blame stuff. Scott, too. It's probably Scott's fault, too. You know, too, I think I should Christie's. probably blame Scott I because Christie's I had the, the selfie stick on the back of my bike. And I mean, he, did, he, and he maybe, didn't ask about maybe it. Maybe he didn't see it. Yeah, I don't know. But I'll still blame you and Scott. No, I can't blame Scott because he's a nice guy. <laughs> Sorry about that, Scott. Just messing around. Well, you know, you can blame Christy because she came up and gave you a hug and distracted you. Well, how would she too. know? I'm not going to blame I Christy. Know. She's too, too much of a sweetheart. She is a sweetie. Anyway, we've got to take a real quick break for our sponsors. We're going to be right back and come back so you can hear the rest of the story. If you're looking to either sell or buy a home in the Bradenton North River area, contact Deb Bell to help make your dreams come true at Reynolds Realty. Call Deb Bell, 941-713-5035. That's 941-713-5035 or online at parishfl.com. For all of your real estate needs, call Deb Bell. Welcome back. I'm Deb. And Chuck, you obviously have more to the story. Well, it, we just got to finish up the story because it does just get a slight bit better, only because the way everything <laughs> just played out uh, that whole evening. Yeah. So, of course, now I've got to make it back to you guys, and you guys are probably 25 minutes, maybe more ahead of me. About 30 minutes, yeah. Okay. So now, of course, guess what I'm going to do? Well, I'm going to sort of hightail it a little bit That's more. That's right. You're going to kick it up a notch. That's right. So, And then I've got to make sure I went ahead and put my 360 cam on. Thank goodness. So I put it on at the house, and so I'm leaving, riding down the road. Now, the problem with the 360 cam, at least the way I mine and the way it works for me, is my 360 cam becomes loose because of the vibration. Sure. Even though I've got the selfie stick tied down pretty good, it vibrates loose. So I'm always turning around back to my left where my arm's going behind behind my seat and up in the air to turn the 360s so that it would be tightened on the selfie stick. Right, making sure that it stays in its up, exactly. most upright position. So now that I've gone through all of this, Ugh. I don't want the poor little 360 to fall off and shatter. Heck no. Okay? So I'm constantly keeping an eye on it in my rear view mirror as I drive down the road. So that means, guess what, Deb? Hmm. What does that mean? You're distracted. My eyes aren't on the road. Right. So I only run over four rattlesnakes. That's it. That's all. So <laughs> that's no big deal. Them. So anyway, so I'm riding down the road. Everything's going fine. My selfie stick is not doing the best as it could. I've got my music in, and I begin to sing to the camera some of the music that's going on. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So this ought to be interesting whenever <laughs> I get the time to look at the 360. I uh, can't wait Because there was a couple of good footage. songs. So I am just digging. I'm going down Moccasin Wallow, and I'm just having a great old time back in my music again. I got my 360 camera. Things are looking real good. I'm feeling great. So yeah, I start singing to the camera like I'm somebody. Like I want to. I don't even star. remember the music that you know, so that I could play it. If you could see me <laughs> mouth it, I don't know what it's going to look like. Oh gosh. Anyway, so I'm riding down Moccasin Wall, having a good time. I decide I'm going to turn off the exit and I'm going to you know get back on the interstate and head to you guys. Okay. And I'm just trucking along and just again listening to my music. So as down the road, all of a sudden I see you know coming up on the rest. Stop. And it dawns on me, I think I've gone the wrong direction. Oh, no. So I was going all the way up the interstate toward Tampa. So I said, to heck with this. I'm not waiting to go all the way up to Ruskin or Sun City or whatever that exit is. Sure. And I probably could have, no, I no, couldn't have got there. So I had to turn around. around. Yeah, had to. So I was looking for a, a road in between. And I saw one, and it was like soaked because it's been raining. So it's got all these ruts in there, probably from other cars, or maybe high road patrolmen have gone through there. And I was like, sure. thank goodness I didn't go through that one. And I keep going up the road, and I keep looking for, what's that called? A cutoff. A cutoff through yeah, the median. the median, yeah. But the median there is they got like a little it's forest. It's like a forest, yeah, right? like a little it's, forest. Yeah. <laughs> And, and so I find one, but I pass it. And thank goodness there's no cars behind me because I was able to stop, got off the road real quick, turned off the road. As I was going off the road, my bike bottomed on the on the highway. Ouch. Yep, just a little bit. And then, you know, the first thing that starts to happen to me, Deb, is I start worrying, oh, no, the last time I got off a road on okay. in the interstate was with you. 
Yes, and I was wondering if that crossed your mind because that's yes. like one of your taboo things. We never pull off the that's road. That's right. We never get off the highway no. because you know, we have tubes. I have tubes on my tires, and they're known for just going flat. flat. You know, mm-hmm. tires a little bit different. They might anyway. So that's instantly I'm starting to worry. Okay, no, well that's just my luck. I'm going to have a flat tire up the road. Oh. So anyway, I able to go through this it was like a gravel area, I think. So it wasn't really too bad. Luckily, on the other side where I had to come out, hey, there was not that much traffic. I didn't even have to wait. Got back on the road, trucking back down the road. So everything after that went just fine. Caught up with you guys. Had a great time with Scott and Christy. Yeah, and we got to walk around, check out some different places. We went to Ferg's. We ended up eating at Ferg's. Ferg's. Yes. And uh-huh. uh, so we checked that out. Famous Ferg's. Uh, if you haven't heard of that, I don't know how famous they are, but that's what they say. Yep. And they, they have been there for a while. They call themselves famous. Yep. Yep. They have been. It's a neat place. Different. So a lot of different places down there. Uh, <laughs> I'll keep my some of my thoughts to myself. <laughs> uh, but you know, we 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 really had a great time. I really enjoyed it. I was very grateful that they invited us out because had they not invited us out, you know, maybe I, you know, we I wouldn't have had a chance to get on the bike. Right. And or I, I wouldn't have had a chance something. to tell everybody about the story either. There would be Correct. no story. It'd be another boring, boring. Well, listen. <laughs> <laughs> another weekend like that, we just cannot do it again. Yeah, I just don't like it. Yeah. I just don't like it. But I, I, there is a little bit actually left to the story. Okay. Did you have anything you wanted to add about no, while we were down there? No, I think that there? was, it's a great story, but it's all about that adapting and going and not giving up and just riding the ride. And, and That's I was exactly feeling what great. it is. I was feeling great. Nothing was bothering my prostate, nothing like that. I mean, I was just really feeling good. You were in a good place. But... The uh, next day, okay. I just have no idea what happens. You have no idea what happens. I was out of it. Actually, it hit me when we got home because we got home. What time? Uh, it's probably close to midnight. I think it was, was it a late really night. That, it was eleven thirty. I knew oh, I yeah, was eleven thirty. It was a long day. When we finally got home, I knew I was beat. And uh, but thanks a lot for Scott for leading because it allowed me to have a great time. But uh, so I was beat that night, and I the next morning my body was pounded. I mean, in areas that didn't require the bike, you know, to use the bike. I mean, I was just hurting in the weirdest places. And I don't know if it was because of the surgery or what the deal was. I was really tired. I really didn't get anything done on Sunday. It was really a total bummer. It really sucked, quite honestly. Um, So anyway, I don't know what it was. And then slowly I began to get better uh, throughout the week. So I'm a little bit better. But still, I get tired from time to time. And like you say to me, I'm always what? I mean, what do you say? You had a major surgery and you got to be patient with yourself. Who's so patient? Who can stand you this? Are not it's driving patient. me crazy. I know it is driving you nuts. Um, but, you know, I think that that brings up a good point for motorcycling is that often um, riders that are just getting started don't realize the physicalness of being a motorcyclist. You know, you don't realize when you come take the course that the first day on the range, you're going to end up sore because you're using a whole ton of muscles that you're not used to using in the same way that you do on a motorcycle. And I do believe, you know, you had two and a half, three weeks, actually three full weeks of nothing but resting and relaxing and allowing your body to heal. And then not only do you jump on a motorcycle, but you jump on one that vibrates (laughs) a lot and it doesn't have any air shocks or, you know, it's not a soft tail. So, you know, you're probably getting beat up pretty much no. more than you know on the motorcycle, but you're used no. to it physically most of the time. And so your body's just kind of now adapting, I think, to getting back into activity. I don't know. Whatever it is, it was strange. It's over. I don't want it anymore, even though like today I've got a really severe calf cramp. So I don't know what's you going on. A mess. Enough, enough about my poor I know. Woes. Are you poor, whining on poor me? Poor little old me. Yeah. Goodness Feel sorry gracious, for me, would you? Chuck. <laughs> well, it was a great bike night and a bike event. And again, it was just kind of a, a different way than any of the bike nights that we've been to in other locations. And I thought that was pretty cool. So it just brought a different meaning to biker life because it was truly a, yeah, a different another, biker life. Another genre, genre if you will. New, another mystique that was kind of uncovered for me because you see them and I see them out riding, but you just definitely don't see any of most of them at the bike nights. Yeah. That, and had we'd been working, ones. we'd probably went over and interviewed some people, talked right? to some people, but we can't be working all the time. We've got to have a time where we actually go out and enjoy ourselves That's as right. well. So become a biker. And that was and one of those nights. It was. So um, that was it. That's where we are now. And what, what do you got now, Well, the one thing I want to add is I was doing some research and looking into a few things, and this is Biker Techie Insider Edition is what I'm calling this 
segment. Biker what? Biker Techie Insider Edition. Because we know how you get, you know, when you start talking fast, you have to understand I'm an ordained minister. And I know when (laughs) someone's talking fast, that means they're irritated, they're they're agitated, and all those kind of things. So I'm not, and I'm slowing it down, and we're talking Techie Insider I'm not an ordained minister, by the way. True life story. Thank goodness. But yeah, that's a whole nother story. But um, I was doing some research on this in this one magazine. It's actually the Garage Build magazine. It's one I've just recently started to get a subscription to. And there was an article written by John Frank. And I thought it was pretty interesting because he was talking about air filters. Now, I am not mechanically inclined by nature, and it's not anything that I normally work on. But there were three main purposes for air filters, and I thought I would just ask you, Chuck, do you have any idea what those three purposes oh, you are? You want to embarrass me no, on the air? Because most all. guys would know this. Well, the air is to clean the air, to purify the air so that it goes through the engine, right? Ding, ding, ding. The most obvious, yes, and number one. There you go. You okay. got it? See? That's number one. One for one. There's another reason for an air filter. There's two When more it's called reasons. air filter. Air filter, it, yes. It, is it it's proper flow of the air to the engine to make it go? Well, Certain you way. just said that in a little bit of a different way. But what happens? We what's there when you clean the air filter? Let's talk about that. Nothing's there when I clean mine. Mine's pretty much exposed, other than the little sock I have over it. Okay. So you have a cover. Uh, some people have covers Correct. over their air filters. Their air filters, right? Yep. But those that don't, like if you clean it out, what what a stuff is going to be on there? Carbon. That's right. Extra dirt. All the dirt, right? So there, it, it actually filters not only the air, but it's filtering all that grime and grit. And a lot of people may not realize that it is actually filtering all that other stuff. So that's actually one additional benefit. But it's also and was made for noise suppression. That kind of caught me off guard. Hmm. So you think about it, the overall noise levels of motorcycles, they kept trying to get them to be quieter and quieter. And one way to assist with that is with an air filter. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Yeah, kind of an interesting um, take on air filters. And then this one kind of got me all fired up. Now, okay, hold on a second. So the air filter itself, you're thinking quiets the motor? Or is it the air filter, the the, uh, container that the air filter's in? Uh, the the air filter itself helps with noise suppression. Okay. All right. So, so this one got me all fired up because it is actually known as a flame arrester. Now I'm going, okay, what the heck is that? And so in the older motorcycles, they were known for a lot of backfiring through the carburetors. <laughs> and so in the early days of air filters, it was actually to assist with all of that backfiring and you know, all of that fuel mixture stuff that's going on through there. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Again, I'm not a techie. So for those that are not technical, like probably you or I, then that was kind of a really cool insider techie tip. Well, good for you, Deb, going out there learning something new and teaching us all something new. I'm not a motorcycle um, gearhead or anything like that right. either. Uh, I did, will get out there and try to do a few things. A lot of times I like to have the mechanic take care of it. That way I don't ruin anything. <laughs> So does that mean you're like a little bit not? uh, Anyway, I don't know the right way to say it. There has been a couple of other advances in the world of air filters that I thought were kind of interesting. Do you remember like our old car days? What were those air filters made out of? Do you remember if the material was any different than what we've got today? No. Okay, so they used to be foam. And I remember going to... A foam air filter where you'd have that foam. I'm trying to think. Yeah, it was kind of a, a little bit more of a soft foam. And then they actually changed that to that pleated paper filter, which we use today. Okay. Um, because it's almost that pleated paper is more of a maintenance-free type material. So, again, you think about the old car days. And it used to be, I, I remember going to Napa Auto Parts or wherever we bought the air filters from. And they used to be kind of a foamy, like a sponge. Um, kind of mesh material, but then that's now changed. Maybe you're older than I am. Well, I don't think so. I'm a few years younger. So um, I thought that was kind of an interesting way to think about kind of the evolution of air filters too. And even in that particular piece, their technology is always growing. So um, also, it was funny in suggestions about cleaning them. I just want to throw this out too. There's no consistency in how to clean your air filter. Some would recommend tapping it on like a hard surface like the concrete or something. And then others would say, no, never do that. Mm. So it was really inconsistent. One also, one um, part of that article that I was reading was talking about blowing it off with air. But then if you do that, you got to make sure that you don't blow it with too much force or then you'll damage that now pleated paper. Well, then 
there's some thought, and I don't know if it has to do with air filters, but if you, depending on which direction you blow it in, so if if you blow it, you know, because the particle is going through the filter one way, right. and if you blow it black the other way, could you create more of a problem? So Hey, that's a thought. I don't know. I don't know, know either. I'm that no was kind engineer, of an interesting... But, so <laughs> Could could actually indeed could blowing it off with air could it mess with it depending on whether you sprayed it on the outside or the inside? Hey, I, I didn't I didn't read any of that information. Maybe I didn't really maybe think one of our listeners or uh, mechanic can there let us tell know. Us about Absolutely. It. So we do have several mechanics that we are friends with. So if you listen to the show and want to give us a shout out about the right way to clean an air filter, by all means, please let, let us, us know. know. I'm sure our listeners and we comment will certainly on our podcast, pass along. Our f- comment on our Facebook, Facebook page, page whatever for it sure. Is. Yes, be sure. So I thought that was a really really cool article. And again, I'm not really a techie kind of person when it comes to mechanics stuff so i thought that was really neat that maybe some other non-techie motorcyclists could enjoy well i think it's really cool deb that you actually read an article like that what makes that so cool well you like you said you're not some gearhead you're, you don't go out you don't do the mechanics on the bike you don't normally do anything you've always been there when we've had, had to work on cars or bikes to help me i've been you, your support system man. that's right and, and without you being there a lot of times i wouldn't have never been able to get these things done so but for you to go out and to read an article yeah. about that hey more power to you right so you know keep on reading deb so that the next step is you can read the how to's so i can have you in the garage now that i got you riding bikes i need you to start fixing the bikes wow okay so all i right. knew that there was a strategy that's now right and it's we, all out we've got to go real quick to our sponsors you guys stay tuned we'll be right back hi this is chuck with the chuck and deb show if you'd like to be a sponsor on our show please contact us at 216-7625. That's 216-ROCK. We look forward to hearing from you. Thank you. WTF. What the frick? That's what I'm saying. What the frick? Have you ever heard of this thing called the Iron Butt Association, Chuck? I have heard of that. Well, Why do you us, ask? Well, because I just recently started to learn a little bit more about it because I was reading an article about the Texas version of it. We'll get to that. However, you know, I'd heard a few writers in my past talk about it, but I never knew anyone that had really done it. So do you know anything about it? I just know, uh, I think uh, J9 Jim uh, did it, right? J9 ah. Jim and may- maybe Mikey. I can't remember. But wow. I know that somebody we know did it. I do. I and thought. I remember people talking about it too, but I hadn't really known exactly what that was. So here's a little bit more information for those that are interested in the art of long distance riding. That is what this is all, all right. about. I love the art of long distance riding. I know. And I I'm prefer to, curious. if I get on the bike, I mean, I don't mind going for little short jaunts, you know, and getting out, you know, as people bar, bar crawl and bar hop and whatever. Yeah, that's uh, not my kind of riding. You know, that's all right. Every once in a while to do that. Uh, but I prefer to go on some longer distance rides, at least 100 miles a day. 100 miles? How about 1,000 miles in 24 hours? Is that, that hours. what they do? 1,000 miles in 24 hours? 1,000 miles in 24 hours. Well, that would be hours. quite the challenge, I do believe. Yep. So there are five remaining events of the association this year. That's important to remember. What's the association? The Iron Butt Association. It's actually an an actually association. Yes, it is. And they have a calendar of events. And like I said, there's only five left this year. The thing about it, though, it's most most commonly called the Saddle Sore Thousand for that thousand miles. I I thought that was kind of cool. Because you're going to have a sore saddle when you're all said and done. (laughs) Sore saddle. I'm going to have a sore something else. It's not going to be my saddle. We're definitely not going to be my saddle. No, well, it's your butt in the saddle, so maybe that's why it's the your iron butt. It's got to be sore saddle butt. So I guess they're saying that my saddle. Okay, anyway. Yeah, your butt will be sore from the saddle. But I get what they're saying. Something's going to be sore. Yes, it doesn't take long for things to get sore, especially if you don't ride as often. You got to really, actually, in my opinion, you got to be in shape. You got to be in shape to do something like that. Well, absolutely, and I think for this particular type of ride, you've got to really condition yourself. It's just like a fine-tuned athlete. You've got to work toward that success because yeah. this is no easy feat so i'm about ready to share with you a little bit about it because i don't think that you know i could just go out and hop on the bike and say i'm gonna do a thousand miles in 24 hours today i just don't think that's no. possible number one you got to be prepared right to be able to do that you got to know how to do it and you got to be able to physically be able to endure it in my
my personal opinion. Well, the nice thing about it is the Iron Butt Association has a website that has every detail, kind of everything that's required for it, because there are some requirements. You don't just jump on your motorcycle and go and hope and pray that you make it. And they also have recommendations of how to do it successfully, you know, things that people have learned across the time of doing it, and they make suggestions, recommendations, and how to be organized in it. So a couple of things about the... Saddle Sore 1000, they call it their guidelines, yeah, which is the Iron Butt Association's 1,000 mile ride in 24 hours, is it needs to be completely documented. So again, you don't just jump on and ride. So 1,000 miles in 24 hours, as I mentioned, but they also have a 1,500 miles in 36 hours. All right, so let's just talk about, because you mentioned document, do you have any idea how they're supposed to document that? What what does that mean? Uh, yeah. I guess you could video record it. You well, could, you've got to document you got to your document route. There's all sorts route, of specifics okay. about the route. If you ride highway miles, there's another calculation involved when it comes to highway miles. Um, there's all sorts of stuff. So let me just kind of I mean, get through this. Wouldn't that be the interesting way to go? I mean, it was... All right, I'll let you go. Yeah. But seems like the best way to do it would definitely be highway miles, but go ahead. Well, yeah, I would think so, too. However, it doesn't always work that way. Just think about if your highway miles, miles were through Atlanta, Georgia. Hmm. You'd, go you'd sit Atlanta, 10 Georgia miles. Yeah, I wouldn't drive that highway. <laughs> I'm go through Atlanta, Georgia <laughs> to find so, a way around. But if that's the only I place you had to go. there's a way around. The 24 hours, what's interesting about that is actually they call it clock time. So it's you start at a designated beginning start point, and that's documented. And then you have an actual documented end point. Okay. So it's probably when you first fill up, and there's got to be someone there as a witness to be the documented person and then there's got to be someone at the very end of it to calculate your miles and be the witness for that ending point too and then all of this other stuff in between so every hour on a major highway which may be why you want to get there that you get approximately 20 minutes off time back to use toward resting talk to the Uh, mic Deb. okay (laughs) and um (laughs) 20 minutes off time back to use for resting which doesn't come necessarily back off of your 24-hour clock. So, so say that again because you know how slow I can be. So well, what does no, that mean? I, I'm not quite sure, but that's I, I worded it exactly the way they have well, it on their website. It so I can try to understand. Every it hour mean. on a major highway, you get approximately 20 minutes off time back to use off. for resting. Okay, go ahead, keep going then. All right. So uh, the other thing is, is a 25. Long riding tips they have, I said, as I mentioned on the website, the highway obviously is the fastest and quickest way to get there. And they said people that have a map and a route for highway mileage, generally it takes them 18 to 20 hours to accomplish the thousand miles. Okay. Um, The documented route, again, if it's a straight line, there are guidelines for that. If it's a round trip, certain receipts need to be verified by the route. You need to get a starting witness, an eyewitness friend, um, and it has to not be someone that's riding with you um, to kind of be the audited person. And you could be audited and they could actually be inquire with that person about whether or not they actually eyewitness you. So, you know, on today's day with technology, a camera is always a great way to document that. Um, also, you need to collect and track your fuel receipts. So the start is the first computer generated receipt and a receipt for every turning point that you make. Kind of interesting. Again, it's not something you just jump on the motorcycle and go do. It's very well planned out. What is that? A receipt for every turning point. How do you do that? Well, you've got to stop your plans, I guess, every time you maybe make a turn. If there's an intersecting highway, you've got to get a receipt showing that return. I, you know, there are, again, there are details that I'd have to dig into a little bit further than what okay, just so I you're information. you're just giving a basic overview here. Right, of things that I... But I'm not allowing you to do that. No, you are. <laughs> slowly but surely. I'm just surely. trying to understand. I'm trying to learn. I don't think like we're going at highway pace. probably be able to, you know, have those, some, those questions as well, so... And uh, the law, the fuel stops and any long stops need to be noted. The date, time, time zone. So if you're changing time zones, there needs to be that documented. 
um, at least every 350 miles. So they're very specific about the things that need to be documented. Um, there needs to be an end witness, as I mentioned, and you have to submit your documentation. And the, uh, the concept is, is that once you submit everything to the Iron Butt Association, it is manually reviewed by a, a te- not a team member, but an entire team. So it can take up to two to three months for you to receive your verification that you actually have completed successfully the iron butt. All right. So what keeps somebody from having a false witness? Well, I think there's the level integrity. of honesty and the integrity of but, just you know, knowing that you've might accomplished. Just want that patch. Don't they get a patch? So they I, can there's put a on patch their vest, and a, a pin or and a certificate. So there are some things, but it's it's very high re, highly regarded, and it's something that if uh, me and my own inner self, if I've got to look myself in the mirror every day, I want to know that if I earn that patch, so I did it the right way. That's right. I don't blame you. Yep. So anybody thinking about cheating out there, hold, think about that for a second. <laughs> I don't think I don't think we have any listeners. Uh, like I don't that. know. I don't think so either. I think everyone would want to work hard at it and and do you do your due diligence to make sure that you achieve what you achieve and you know making sure that you look and and achieve and and feel proud about the accomplishment. Absolutely, because that would be a major accomplishment. Absolutely, you'd yes. have a sore uh, saddle, saddle for months, uh, but maybe. in the Wonder, saddle probably for a little while. Yeah, definitely. Well, well, you'd build up to it, so it wouldn't be like a shock. You're going from not riding to riding a thousand miles in 24 hours. You, you, so it'd be a little prep work. You know what works for me is that you know, and you maybe you can relate to this is that when we've been on long rides especially when we go days on end it's like when it comes to an end it's like well for me and uh, for me it's like i don't want to stop it's like now i just want to keep going i'm enjoying being on the bike the things are going well i just want to keep on keeping on and so when the journey ends it's real difficult for me to actually allow it to end because it by the time that you've been on a bike for a week at least i think and you've been on a bike for all those days and you've been riding all those miles um you become it becomes a part of you you become accustomed right. to it and it's something that for me i just want to keep going on and on what about you yeah i i can relate to that because also i think what's important to know is that <laughs> you, uh, you know, you do, you, you, it's a conditioning point and you all of a sudden become very conditioned about that's kind of what the day looks like is getting up, getting on the motorcycle and being part of that the whole time. And it is, it's, it's like you've, you've completed an accomplishment, but you don't want it to end because, you know, just like an athlete and I can kind of relate to that is, you know, some of the road races I've done, running races I've done is once it's done, then what? You know, that vacation that you've worked so hard for, that road trip you've worked and planned so much for, you know, all of a sudden it's done. Now what? What's the next accomplishment? What do you do next? Where do you go next? And so I can understand that completely is there's almost a sense of loss as you've accomplished. But it's it's not about the loss. It's just hmm. for me, it's about the motorcycle feels so good and it feels so right being on it to be without it doesn't seem natural. Okay. All right. I, I so get it has that. nothing to do about the loss or it's over or anything like that. It's about me and my motorcycle and just wanting to keep going. That's just what it is for me personally. That's how I feel, especially if I've, I've been going for a long time. It's something that uh, I thought maybe you would feel too, but you know, everybody's different. So I right. don't know how you might feel out there listening. Uh, but you know, to each his own. Absolutely right. So I thought that was a pretty cool WTF that I've heard about, but not really well, learned actually about. It's cr- and so, you know, it is a WTF, I guess, when you put it that way. And I don't want to leave out Texas because I'd mentioned that early on. You know, everything in Texas is bigger, better, as they say. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, I've heard that saying. <laughs> yeah. And, and you were actually born in Texas, correct? I was, but okay. it doesn't mean And you that love that. I you do. You love to be able to say everything uh, is from Texas, well, is from whatever. bigger and better, right? Whatever. It has nothing to do with that. Okay. Whatever you say. It's just what I've always heard. You know, the trucks are bigger. They're more lifted. All that. It's just a thing. You know. <laughs> so that, that's what you come up with. That's what you come up with. So the truck trucks are busy. <laughs> you know, well. Bigger. And they're lifted and all that. Yeah. That, that's what you get out of that meaning well, all right I, I do i'm trying to keep it kind of clean because we're on the radio all right we got a problem Best i words? think you're the problem so what's the deal <laughs> <laughs> all right so texas oh. Has a, oh now i'm a problem no just today right now this minute all right so 
Uh, Texas has WTF. really. <laughs> that's right. Texas. W E. T F. Keep on. All right. So Texas has upped the ante by doing this whole thousand miles with no stops whatsoever. No stops for gas, no stops for food, and no stops for bathroom breaks. Okay. Yep. So good luck with doing all that. That's all I got to say. The, how how you? Oh well, I know how you can not go to the bathroom. I know you can how you not take a leak. Well, you'd be able to take a leak, but what about the other one, man? I yeah. mean, you you. I mean, if you have to do number two while you're on the bike, man, I can only see some serious issues, especially if it were me, because there's gonna be a mess. A mess. Don't visualize it. You know, I do not visualize it. Stop visualizing yeah. the mess. Yeah. Well, listeners. You just had to mention it, so then that happens. But yeah. I don't know. That's a really good point. I th- I didn't think about that. But I'm even thinking as a lady, how you know? Okay, guys, you can just whip it out and do what you got to yeah, do. Yeah, that's a good point. Ladies, we don't have that luxury, oh. so that so, would so be you got to get different. catheter. No. Oh heck. Oh, to the no. Man. Woo. No. Um. Well, I'll let's find just see how dedicated you are, Deb. Well, yeah, this Texas girl is not going to do it in Texas to start. I'll do it somewhere else, and then maybe when I figure it all out, maybe I'll go to Texas and do it in Texas. What, do, what are you doing in Texas? Well, the bigger, the better. You know, like trucks. Oh yeah. Thing. Okay. <laughs> No, you can do that um, Iron Butt uh, 1000, but that's what they're doing. There are no gas stops, no food stops, and no bathroom breaks. I get the gas. You can find ways to do that. I mean, one person even mentioned that they had kind of done it like the um, airplanes do it in the air, and they had actually maybe a vehicle or something that was siphoning the gas through them while they it, were still it riding. Would, it wouldn't have crazy. to be siphon. It'd have to be more like a pump or something, I something. would think. And so, so that uh, takes a lot of coordination, too. you got to have that vehicle. Right. That's like got to be safe. you got to have it safe, man, because uh, anything can happen out on the road like that. Oh man! Yeah, yeah. There's I don't a know lot. If I, I don't know if you know, I'd be up for that. I mean, I mean, I would actually. I'd be up for the challenge. I just have to make sure everything's going to function because my big dilemma is that I am so messy. I mean, I <laughs> probably have gas all over the place, and who knows what else? Well, not. Yeah, I get it. If there's a mess to be made, call on Chuck. So I just want to make sure that everybody realizes that not only is it all of the things we talked about before. But now Texas is causing you to do a lot more prep work, a lot more They're not planning. causing it. They're just saying They're if saying, you if want you to take this on, Texas, here's you what go. you got to do to have a bigger challenge. So do you have any of the resources of where people can go if they want to learn more? You can go out to the Iron Butt Association's website. It's just ironbuttassociation.com, I do believe, and check it out. I just did, again, a simple Google search, Iron Butt. Um, and it all came up for me. It was very great resources of information if that's something that you're interested in. But I didn't realize that it was really looked at as something as an endurance type ride. Now, that was, was interesting. Uh, the Iron Butt is the same as the Sore Saddle one? Or? Yeah, the Iron Butt is the I mean, Iron the Butt Texas Association. Um, so it's I think Texas is the same one, Iron Butt um, Texas version, I guess. I'm not quite sure. So I read that somewhere else. So they can go to the else. site to get both that information as far as you're aware of. Yes, and you can probably, I'm sure, just Google it and find probably more information than you'd ever want. Okay, well, probably what we need to do is we need to take a break and find out if Texas does have things bigger and better. <laughs> yeah, do you want anyway, to show you, we Chuck? we want to take a break and hear from our sponsors. We'll be right back. Our sponsor today is Tony and Guy Hairdressing Academy. If you desire to be a leader in this fast-growing cosmetology industry, then contact Tony and Guy Hairdressing Academy in Colorado Springs, Colorado at 719-390-9898. Again, 719-390-9898. Or visit coloradosprings.tonyguy.edu. For more information about Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, Tony and Guy Hairdressing Academy, call 208 208- Nine three zero one two seven six. Again, that number is two zero eight nine three zero one two seven six. Or visit them at cordelaine.tonyguy.edu, or visit the Chuck and Deb Show sponsor page for more information. All right, so we're back, and Deb, you've been doing some uh, online research, I guess, lately on some things you want to share with people. What do you got going on over there? Well, this is one really wacky doodle thing that, you know, there was a time. Wacky doodle, doodle thing. thing. Well, you know, that's. 
People, you got to love this show. This is why you keep coming back. It has nothing to do with me. It has to do with wacky Wacky doodle doodle things. things. So this particular wacky doodle thing is, you know, back in the day, it must have been the 80s when we saw Back to the Future movies. Do you remember when that was? The 80s, early 90s? I don't recall. Okay, yeah, there you go. That's about right. But, you know, the hoverboard that they were riding around on and all the space uh, flying stuff that they were introducing. Well, you know, we really haven't seen it until most recently. However, I did find that a company, ALI Technologies, Inc., will be manufacturing 100 special hover bikes and their flying motorcycles, and they'll begin accepting reservations in October. So we always knew it would eventually come to this. Guess what? October of 2019, if you really want a flying machine, here's your chance to order and put on reservation your flying motorcycle. So uh, expected customers are expected to be wealthy foreigners. Um, and it is cutting edge technology and top speed for these are estimated at 125 miles an hour. Wow. Yeah. So it's not, this was what I thought was interesting about that is that it's yet not yet permitted on the public roads in Japan and they're expecting the prices to be approximately the same as a luxury sports car. What's that? 60 to... One hundred twenty thousand nice. dollars. Wow. I don't know. It's pretty pricey, so that's why they're thinking maybe the luxury um, automobile class people. Uh, they're anticipating them to be delivered the second half of twenty twenty. So even though you reserve yours the end of this year, you're not getting that baby until next year. And um, how do you test ride or test drive one of them? They're going to actually have uh, an event in Dubai in early I'd love to go tw- in 2020. Cool. So maybe we need to book tickets for that if oh someone boy. wants to invite us to go. Yeah, there you go. Somebody invite us to Dubai that lives there. That'd be cool. We'd love to go. And, you know, we just might make that happen. So you're telling me there's flying motorcycles, motorcycles now. Um, now, does that have anything to do? We happened to watch that video the other day of you said it was a hoverboard or something. The guy was making history by go- you. You read it. I was just watching it. Do you remember? I don't recall. Oh, you know me, people, Blondie, you. and I'm going to use that one. <laughs> Can't even remember the simplest things. It drives me nuts. Let's, anyway, you remember okay. the guy was on the thing that was flying across? It was a hoverboard, yeah. and he was going across the water, across and then you the read English the Channel. English yes, Channel. Yes, there we go. See, now you, you know, see sometimes, Blondie, back. it just requires for you to kick your brain into gear. Yeah, I know. I know everybody sometimes out there is hating start. Chuck right now. Well, whatever. <laughs> you know, sometimes I just got to, <laughs> well, I'm just going to, if I could kick you across this table, you know that I would right now. Well, so. it's a good thing I'm not so close. To you. It's a good thing I'm on the other side of the table. That's right. So stay there, Mister. I'm sure I'll get it later anyway. Yeah, you wish. You Maybe know, in all the right ways. Texas. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, Keep going, Miss Texas. I'll, I'll show you a thing or two about a Texan. Um, so yeah, it was that with someone actually flew across the English now, Channel. It, now I don't. But remember. is that the same thing? Uh, no, I don't. It wasn't a flying motorcycle. I well, can't what, remember what so he was how flying. Is the, how do you have a flying motorcycle? Because a motorcycle has two wheels. Right, and I or yeah, two wheels. They did. You can have a trike that's different. Uh, yeah. It's a motorcycle, but it's a trike. Sheesh! I didn't see a picture. They didn't show a picture. I just read about it because I thought it was kind of intriguing. And who the heck knows? Let's. We've got to stay tuned on that one because that is one to come back to and figure out as they get it developed. Well, we're going to have to do a little well, bit more research on that one because it can't be flying motorcycle. That's what maybe it's the, it. the hoverboard, like you were talking about well, early on. You know, like Back to the Future had, which is interesting to me because you knew in the movie when you saw it that the hoverboard was going to be something gonna that was going to happen. Right. So Somebody's going to do it. Yep. And so sure enough, somebody's done it because that's the video we saw. And they were, the guy would, you know, the first thing I said is what happens if the engine stops? I know, that makes me I mean, he's me dead. Nervous. He's histo. He's right. gone. He's toast. And the English Channel? Yeah, even if he fell done. in the water, that's going to hurt. He's histo, man. I'm right. telling you. Right, but he made it across. We saw the success. That yeah, he was did. Awesome, he landed yeah. over on that other, other thing. Side. That was pretty cool. So is that a flying motorcycle? No, that was a hoverboard. So I wonder... <laughs> Maybe this guy has some spinning wheels that he flies or yeah, whoever it or is. Pedals as he it. goes. I'm not quite sure. We'll see. Pedals. How it- <laughs> now that's a bike. Oh, Deb. yeah, that's right. That's a bicycle, not a motorcycle. <laughs>
Well, oh boy, oh, this is wheels. a show for bikers. <laughs> this Deb is the Biker Life, Life Radio. Radio. Thanks for bringing me back to reality. We 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 are on bike. We are sharing the biker life, not pedal bikes. Well, right. That's why this so, is going to be a flying motorcycle. And, and so, flying motorcycles are coming to a store near you to Dubai next year. Right. Well, yep. if they're coming out to Dubai, we'll see. But a lot of great inventions and things are taking place. Technology is getting really ramped up these days. It's amazing what they can do, what people can do. If you've got an idea out there, now's the perfect time to be able to go out there, have somebody put it, you know, get it to work for you. So don't keep the idea in your head. Go out there and get it, you know, Patented, bring it to reality. Do something, absolutely. Yeah, bring it so- into reality so everybody else can enjoy it. So, all right, Deb, so enough about this so-called flying, flying motorcycle. motorcycle. Yeah. Now I'm probably going to go have to look into it just to see what it, what it is. Or what a nut I am, maybe. No comment? <laughs> I know. I'm trying to like, be nice to you. You know, I've got listeners that are giving me a hard time. They should. All the time be, for, because I give you a hard time on the show. And you do all the time. Well, and that's nothing new. You've been dealing with it for 28 years. Well, true. 29 coming up. It's like yeah, just around the corner. But anyway. You know what? But yeah. you enjoy it anyway. So just keep that's, on going. You'll love the attention. I just keep humoring you so that you stay with me. All right. All right. So Thank you. we've talked a lot about the live wire and different motorcycles. And one that I found um, that's coming up out into the marketplace is by Triumph. And so that I don't always Triumph. see a lot yeah, wanna, with Triumph. But they're actually one. going to introduce... This rocket series, they're going to have a rocket. Oh, now I'm really getting confused. So the now rocket, they're going to have a rocket motorcycles? motorcycle. Yes. Well, so we're going to have rockets and we're going to have flying motorcycles. Yes, but it's not with rockets on it. It's what it's called. It's called the Rocket 3R okay, and the Rocket Because I knew GT. everybody, all my listeners were getting just as confused as I was. Probably. But, I but doubt that it. means they're a little slow too <laughs> Nobody's then. Nobody's as confused as me. <laughs> whatever. So um, they're considered what a road. Whatever. <laughs> what is that roadster? supposed to mean, whatever? Well, that. Just whatever you want it to mean. So that's okay. So the Rocket 3R is going to be considered the Roadster, and the Rocket GT is used ideally for the longer highway trips. Now, here's a couple of things about this new Triumph motorcycle. It will have the largest engine on a production motorcycle at 2,500 cc's. Okay. You're supposed to say, wow, wow. Dad, I am. That's I, that was huge. what was coming next. I could tell. It's like I wanted to say something else, and I can't do it <laughs> on the radio. Yeah. Oh, my. Uh, Beep. Yeah. All right. So it is going to have an inline three-cylinder liquid-cooled engine. Okay. So guess where the trend is for motorcycles? It's all about liquid-cooled engines. <laughs> um, unique three-header exhaust. And... Here, look at this, like the live wire. Four <laughs> riding modes. Keep laughing at me, will you? I'm not laughing at you. <laughs> so it will have a featured traction control. It'll have um, a hill hold control, which I think is pretty interesting, especially if you live in a mountainous climate. That's kind of an interesting concept. Keyless ignition, which... Key- keyless Don't most of our motorcycles these days keyless, yeah. Um, And then it's really looked at to be the high performance muscle bike Uh, muscle bike for triumph huh yes pretty cool that will be a triumph that, <laughs> that yeah, is too that cool. might bring them back into the marketplace but hey you know everybody's what do you mean tr- back in the marketplace they're a very highly respected motorcycle they in are. fact i would like to ride one someday i you know i just have a particular style we all have our styles and desires that's right. and triumph has been one a motorcycle has been around for years they're highly respected a lot of people like triumphs i personally like triumph i like the i like the logo <laughs> <laughs> No, I do. I mean, I think they're an interesting motorcycle. Again, you know, I've only been with my Harley. I've had a rice burner in the past. So I haven't been able to get to where I have a Triumph, okay. uh, a Ducati, you know, sure. all these different motorcycles that are out there that I want to add to my collection or at least go out and ride, test ride, take one for a ride. These are all the ones that I want to be able to experience because I can't talk firsthand about a Triumph, but I do know that a lot of people ride them. Yes. I know that there are some neat bikes out there just like a bmw you know the bmw is a different type of bike right so you know again 
I, I'm a biker. I would like to try all the bikes. Well, maybe we need to put that on our list and make it happen. Let's go test ride some bikes. Well, somebody needs to send them to us so we can test ride yes, them. Yes, that's right. Just let us be your testers. I'll be happy to that's do right. that we and can talk do a, a lot about it. We can do a full review. We'll do a whole show on your motorcycle. Just give us a call. <laughs> and give us a motorcycle and <laughs> we'll be try. happy to do that You can have you. it back if yeah, you want. Yeah, we'll send it back. We'll, we'll, we'll need it, back. it probably for a good month in order sure. to break it in, check it out. All so, different terrains. I mean, we need it. I would think uh, at least right. a month. Them, and not just one. We need two because we both ride. That's right. And that way yes. you would get a man and a woman's, woman's perspective, perspective on the bike. What more so could anybody get com- want? What's that? What more could they want? I don't know. They'd be That's insane perfect. for not contacting us. If you're listening now or if you know somebody that owns one of these motorcycle companies, you better get them in touch with us because they're going to want all our listeners. On Biker Life Radio <laughs> to, to hear to, about the bikes. There you go. So there we have it. Uh, Very interesting news. I think the most interesting one there for me is that Triumph is coming out with a rocket. (laughs) Well, the Rocket 3R and the Rocket GT. Yeah, of course. So, yeah, you got to get right. They're not going to have a motorcycle with rockets. Yeah, no, but that sounded good. Anyway, the the one with the uh, the, uh, the flying motorcycle, we're going to have to look into that a little bit more. Tomorrow night, um, which is Thursday night, is a bike night at Stottlemyre Smokehouse in Sarasota. Um, There's going to be live music, drink specials, food specials, vendors, and in particular, obviously, uh, West Coast Florida Riders Organization, Full Throttle Magazine, Rossiter's Harley-Davidson, Jay Sizzle, Fran Hosh Law, to name a few, but also the Chuck and Deb Show will be out there. We want to make sure that we have a chance to meet you, the biker life that's in our local area. Yeah, please come out and join us. Let us know that you heard the show. We'd really appreciate that a great deal. And we are hoping to be there. I mean, it's tomorrow. I know. But you just don't no, know no. what's going to happen. We're waiting on our daughter. Waiting she could be baby. having her baby at any time. Yes. So we just won't know. Deb, let everybody know how they can find us. Okay, so you can find us at the Chuck chuckndebshow.com You've been listening to The Chuck and Deb Show heard each Wednesday afternoon at 4 p.m. right here on 1490 AM WWPR We thank you for listening and we invite you to join us next week